Okay, guys, we're white this time, so we're going to push the first pawn to our classic sort of London style opening. He then threatens my bishop, so I immediately move it back, get it to the back rank safety, and then he takes. Take back, happy to do the trade. He takes again, and then why I didn't take with my queen, I'm not quite sure. But this way I got some natural development, and then I was able to take his knight without any opposition. He then threatens the check, so I put the bishop in front. I think he's trying to strengthen his position. I go trade for trade because I'm up material. Castle to the short side. And at this point, I'm feeling pretty confident about the game. And we have a lot of pressure starting to build on that c7 square, particularly if I can back it up and get my queen on that file, which we now have access to, thanks to my pawn taking. It's all looking relatively promising. It's currently guarded by his queen, but, you know, we're getting there. And when I say pressure, it's coming on from the knight on b5 and the bishop on g3. So it's looking pretty promising. He then moves his queen out, I guess, to threaten my horse. So I'll back her up, or him up, I'm not really sure. And at this point, it feels like he's just targeting the f2 pawn. As in, if he tries to get his queen in there, I then can't take with my king. But I do have my bishop backing it up, and a rook. So I'm feeling relatively confident. I then move my queen up, not realising quite how much protection I had there, and just thought, you know what, it's a bit of extra bolster bolstering. And it's not getting us too far away from that c file, which is currently guarded. They then threaten my queen. So immediately I think, right, I'll take. Not realising that that square was guarded by his knight. And now I'm down a queen. And whenever you're down a queen, it's not particularly fun. But alas, I'll try and push his queen back. And I get a check. Not brilliant, but you know, I also have a rook on the same file as his king. Just sort of good practice, try and threaten him a bit. And my main goal at this point is to try and push my pawn and get to the end, get myself a new queen after my old one's gone. So sort of open the file for her. He's sort of threatening... I feel like he's just trying to threaten that f2 square again. But at this point, I've sort of cottoned onto it. I know that my bishop's there. I know that my bishop can just take. So I'm not too worried. And then try and reroute my knight. I try and go for that f2 pawn. Again, not really thinking. I wasn't paying any attention, knowing the queen can come straight back and take. Not my wisest move. But I'll just kick their, kick their knight away as well and take their pawn, opening up the A-file to allow my pawn to go all the way and promote, right? As it does so. He then, I blundered this piece at the back here. I realise what he's trying to do here is take a rook, fork a rook, or fork the king. So I move my rook over, out the way, and then realise I've just done exactly what I was trying to avoid. Ended up my rook and my king forked, and then losing a rook, just as I promote. So just as it looked like I was about to take the lead, a blunder, I've then got my queen at the back, they immediately take, I take back with a bishop, not realising, I was thinking I could be really clever here, take with my bishop, but then he'd take with his castle, and then i take with my castle, but I wasn't paying attention to the fact that his queen can just also take my castle, so then I was down to 11, like so, he checks me, and that is checkmate, unfortunately. Not a great end to the day, really. Okay, so we're black, so you know exactly what defence we're going to start playing. It'll be the Karakhan. He then, this is a new version again, I haven't seen before. The two pawns go together. However, he sort of matched me. I don't know if there's a name for this. If you do know it, please drop it down below in the comments. So he takes, I take back. Got some nice central stuff going on. I develop my knight to take back, because I know he's going to take me next. He then develops out to the rim. I'm not quite sure what his thinking is for that. But I'll just carry on, I'll just go for it normally. I got the impression this pl player wasn't particularly good and he was quite cocky. So I think he thinks he had me, I'll get onto why later. I think he thinks he had me sort of pinned here. So I protect both with my pawn like that. He'll then go to develop again. I'll, I think he was trying to fork my queen and my rook. So I'll just move my queen forwards and get her out of the way. He's then gonna push his pawn again. I'm not really sure what that was threatening or anything. But I'll then go to check. Not so much just to check. So I wanted to develop my bishop. There wasn't really much point in e7. d6 then just gets in the way of my queen. I can't go to the c file because the pawn's in the way. So that I just checked him. But it wasn't even a check. It was just to try and get my uh, bishop out. And then I can see it's currently hanging. Instead of doing things the sort of proper and okay way, I let my knight get in position so that when he took, I can take back. I mean, there's nothing he can do here. And at this point, I've won his castle. So... He goes, pushes his pawn like so. I fork his king in his castle. I don't know if this is the fried liver or the fried liver is the queen and the rook. I was scared to say earlier, but please let me know in the comments below again which one the fried liver is. So then I took his, took his rook in the corner and I was feeling pretty good about myself. However, he then pulled out this little bad boy. And at this point, my opponent was literally laughing at me. So I decided, no, I cannot let this happen. I can't lose it twice in two games. 
So check the king the first time. He can't take because my knight's in the back corner. I'll then move and I'll check him a second time, hanging my bishop from minus three. I'll then check him a third time with my other knight, meaning I've hung my other knight, so I've now lost minus six. Or if I lost my queen, that'd be minus nine. On this go, I can then bring my knight back to defend my queen and stop her from being taken. At which point, on the very next go, I think he's trying to keep the pressure on. I got the impression this guy was quite cocky from all the laughing faces he was sending me. And I think he thinks he could still get me here. But nevertheless, I'll castle to unpin my queen. He'll take. I think he thinks I was going to take back with my queen. God, does he not know what a pro player I am? I'll take with the pawn. He's then, I'm not really sure what this move is here. Oh yes, of course, he's going for the checkmate on the h7 square. So I'll just stop that by checking his king here with this brilliant move, d5, checking his king, forcing him out, then taking his knight. He then tried to develop his other knight. I took his rook, and now I've got an honesty disclaimer. After all the laughing faces he sent me earlier, I may have sent him some after that, after he was plus seven down. And I knew I wasn't going to lose now because I was taking this properly seriously. Um, he then goes to threaten my queen at the back. I move her inside to support. He then thinks I'm going to take something at the back file, clearly, because he puts his queen there. I move my castle here, and now it's checkmate in one. I don't know. I don't think he can get out of this checkmate, but I was feeling pretty smug about myself now. I really don't know what that move was. But I'll just take the pawn with my queen and checkmate. Let's go. Okay. Okay, so in this one with the black pieces, giving us another chance to practice our Karo Khan opening after our opponent pushes his king pawn. He then goes for the double pawn in the center, so we'll immediately threaten one, he'll accept the trade, and we'll immediately take back. He'll then bring out his knight, trying to threaten that pawn again. So nothing too silly, we'll just back it up and start to open up the short side castle. He'll then bring his second knight out, so we'll bring our second pawn, which again solidifies our position in the center and gets a nice file for the bishop out and allows us to castle. Great little pawn move there, if you ask me. He will then bring his bishop out, threatening my knight, but no worries, we'll just look to develop normally and try and put some pressure on that pawn of his. So if he moves his knight, I'm then able to take. He'll then hang his pawn on the far side. I'm not entirely sure why, but I'll just take his pawn like so. And after that, he resigns. Um, Yeah, easiest win of the series so far, guys.